Mary Gailey, and I'm here in my home studio in Corona, California in the United States. I'm here to share a little bit about myself and to give you a tour of my studio. I grew up in the city of Ontario in Southern California with my mom, my dad, and my little sister. In 1972, when I was 21 years old, I married my high school sweetheart, and we moved about 45 minutes down the road to a rural community near the city of Corona. We bought an acre of vacant land that was a short distance from town and we built our dream home on a little hilltop with a view of the foothills and the surrounding citrus groves. We planted lots of trees and a big flower garden and a vegetable garden and we eventually raised our two daughters here. We lived the country life complete with horses, dogs, cats, chickens and for a while even a couple of pygmy goats but the goats refused to eat the weeds and ate the flowers instead and one day got into the house and ate the wallpaper. So the goats had to go. Anyway, fast forward to today. And now Corona has grown so much that we're surrounded by housing tracks and freeway and shopping centers and traffic. But um, we still maintain our little one acre island of country life as best we can. Our only animals now are our seven hens who all have names and their own personalities. One's even named Louise after Louise Fletcher. And we have a beehive. I think my creative path was laid out before me when I was a little girl. This photo, and I hope you can see it here, shows me seated in between my mom, my dad, and my two grandmothers. These people were also very creative people in their own rights, each of them. So when I look at these four people and how they nurtured me all along, um, they, they saw me through dance classes and music lessons and just overall taught me an appreciation for all of the arts. In 2019, I saw a post on Facebook about a free workshop from an artist called Louise Fletcher, and it was called Find Your Joy. Well, this just sounded like a lot of fun, so I decided to give it a try. I loved Louise and her approach, and I went on to take her Find Your Joy and Find Your Voice courses not only once, but twice. It changed my entire outlook. I could now call myself an artist and believe it. Louise introduced me to Nicholas Wilton in his Create a Visionary program. I took Nick's um, CVP course in 2020 and 2021, and I really liked his simplified approach to teaching art principles. Through that course, I learned how to critique my own artwork and to be persistent in showing up in the studio each day. Louise also introduced me to the artist Gabriel Lipper. I really love the way that he combines abstraction and realism in his work, and I wanted to learn how to do that. So last year, I took Gabe's Learning to See course. I enjoyed that so much that I took the two of his workshops that he offered afterwards to the alumni. I took the Still Life course and the Figurative course. I enjoyed that figurative course so much that I um, think afterwards the work that I did is some of the favorite work that I've ever done. After taking Louise's Find Your Joy and Find Your Voice courses, I had my found myself with a um, lot of these wonderful little paper exercises that we had done, the taped off exercises and then other little practice pieces that we had done play with. And um, they were kind of building up into a big stack in a drawer. And of course they weren't works of art in themselves, they were never intended to be. But um, I ended up making a sketchbook out of uh, some of the torn and cut up pieces and uh, little bits of magazine cutouts and other little things that I had laying around. This one here is uh, some of the tapes that we put on the edge of the paper that got painted over. And the tapes themselves, I had a whole collection of them at one time. I could, couldn't bear to get rid of them because they were so pretty. But it was fun experimenting with different um, shapes and uh, different bits of collage in with them. I had a lot of fun making this hand. This is woven strips um, that was kind of fun to do. And of course I had to do a bee. This is a collaged bee and the bee needed flowers. 
This is based on a quilt block called the log cabin block. But it was fun to revisit all these pieces that uh, we had done as exercises and turn them into little bits of art. I have an inspiration board where I can change out a message every now and again. I have this bulletin board, which is my low-tech system for keeping track of where my paintings have been and are going in my local art associations. We took the doors off the closet and there's some shelves in there where, for storage of miscellaneous uh, frames and some old small paintings that I may or may not go over and paint over later. Um, there's some plastic drawers that I store small items in. I think they're stationary and some ink pads and stamps in there. This is my painting wall. Um, I've seen several of these in the big studios, but I thought, well, why not for my little studio? It's barely four foot long, but it really did change things up for me because now I can put several of these medium-sized paintings up here and work on them all at the same time and swap them out and compare them with each other. Um, whereas before, all I had was one small um, painting drawing board. On the rest of this wall, I have these ledge shelves where I can put some paintings on the top there. And then here are some mood boards, some paint swatches. I can easily swap these things out for whatever I'm doing at the moment. You just buy the empty bottles and then I put mediums in them, just so uh, matte medium, gloss medium, GAC 100, things like that. And it's just a lot handier. Underneath the table are these inexpensive plastic bins for storage of all kinds of things, rags, aprons. One of my favorite things in here is my wheel around trolley because I can move it wherever I'm painting. My trolley's right there and everything's handy with the paints and the brushes. Um, my woodies, if you haven't used woodies, give them a try, they're fantastic. On the other side in the cups, there's a couple of brayers, uh, some sponges, on this end, I have a little plastic hook or a metal hook that's magnetized and I can hang my squeegee. And then I have a second trolley over here next to the window that has uh, my Posca pens, uh, my uh, Neocolor crayons, pastels, pencils, rulers. This is a straight edge that you get at the hardware store for making clean edges. These are some foam texture boards that are kind of fun. If you've never um, made texture out of these foam boards, they're kind of fun. Uh, these are some more texture tools. Uh, one of my favorites here is a, this is an old peach pitter and it's got a nice sharp point on it for scratching in and then the edge is sharp too and you can scratch into your paint there too. Another little plastic cup with sponges. These are the wedges, catalyst wedges with different uh, textures on the side. This is a metal table and rack that I got from online, I think from Jerry's Artorama, and it has these fairly narrow shelves on it, and I use these for um, paper pads, and um, then there's stacks of my figure drawings here, and then some of the painting exercises we've done for Louise's course, and then up here is another work surface. Uh, this little rack that holds, I'm using it, you can use it to dry paintings with. It's just a dishwasher, just dish rack you can get for the kitchen. This rack on the wall is made to go on the back of a door, but when I put took the door off the room, uh, I just mounted it on the wall and it holds um, mediums and spray cans and all kinds of miscellaneous little things. You can get a lot of stuff in there. And on each of these shelves, are these plastic drawer bins which hold scrap paper, small um, pieces of work. Um, I've got a drawer for stickers that the kids use, templates, um, drawers for charcoal, pencil, pastels, things like that. I can put some larger frames or canvases on this shelf. Uh, there's this little green bin holds some smaller canvases or cradle panels and then um, this this plastic bin holds um, presentation folders where I keep, um, this one has color charts. This is where I keep some of my stencils and it, um, it keeps them in these little plastic pouches and then it keeps them clean and 
from getting wrinkled and stuff like that. You have to use every square of space, every square inch of space. So here's another little metal rack that has some craft paints. And then this is a gourded birdhouse that I made. And then this is, you know, you wipe your brushes on a paper towel and you end up with a piece of art that you like better than your art. So you have to hang that up too, right? Welcome to my second studio. This area was originally my sewing room and now it's more of a multi-purpose room. I still can sew in here. I don't paint in here because I like to keep the paint separate from any fabrics or anything. So this is more of a clean room. Uh, it's also kind of my art gallery. I hang my art up in here to enjoy. Anybody that sews knows you get to be a fabric holic and have more fabrics than you'll ever use in your lifetime. And lots of storage up here. Now I use this counter space uh, for framing and such, um, laying out cutting paper, uh, things like that. There's some clamps I use when I'm um, gluing uh, panels to frames. This is a cool um, magnifying light. It's not plugged in, so I can't show you how it works, but there's a, um, a light bulb underneath here that lights up and then for those of us who need a little extra help seeing close up, it's a great tool. This wall I use to, um, you know, put paintings because if you paint, you have a lot of paintings and you need a place to put them. This old dresser uh, used to be in my mom and dad's bedroom and my dad uh, refinished it years and years ago and um, I love it and can't get rid of it. So it's here, um, extra storage. Behind this door is one of my favorite little um, parts of my studio area and it kind of happened by happenstance when we built this part of the house I thought I was going to be into old school photography and um, developing films and such like that so we had this little room built as a dark room well I never did that but it has a um, sink in here and storage and things so it makes a perfect uh, room for storage of extra um, mediums and such um, Little drawers here for little bits and pieces of things, picture hangers, little, this is like my little workshop with tools and um, things like that. But the best part of it is it has this uh, stainless steel sink and so I can come in here and this is where I wash up my brushes and such. And more storage here. Of course we collect every little plastic container we can for water, because you never know. As you enter my home through a side door, you step into this area, which I guess would be the entry to my entire studio area. Um, I have some storage here. I just made a little curtain and these are old photos that I've taken over the years before digitals. These are all prints. And then this is um, a fantastic storage uh, solution. It's an old library card catalog that my dad refinished years ago for my sister and when she passed I inherited it but you have all these wonderful little drawers for storing small small items. Some more storage here in this little alcove and in there is the room where I paint and then there's a bookcase here with my art books and and other books. This is a quilt top that I pieced and never layered or put batting in, but it hangs there because I think it's pretty. Um, this little bench opens up into storage in here. This is where I sit to um, go through things on the computer, the laptop, um, do my reading, research, or I watch the Art Tribe videos and such. And this red chair inspired a painting that I did for the red, white, and black challenge. My husband and I enjoy watching birds in our backyard and we have this really cool app on our phone called Merlin Bird ID. It's from Cornell Labs and it has this awesome feature where you can record the bird song and then it will identify the bird through the song. Well, I found out through the app that Cornell Bird Academy offers an, an online course on how to paint birds and it just sounded so good I couldn't resist. I'm currently working my way through the course. It's taught by Jane Kim, an amazing scientific illustrator and artist. 
And I'm learning about birds and feather groups and bird anatomy and how to capture all of this with paint. We're using fluid acrylic paint and hot press watercolor paper.